Ellis Hennigan. I'm John Scott. Fox News watches on right now. It used to be a president could call a press conference and the three major networks would come and he'd talk to them. And you have pretty much reached everybody uh, in America. He seemed to be saying, Ellis, that politicians can say whatever they want and if they're not challenged, nobody, you know, is going to be the wiser. Well, duh. <laughs> I mean, so where are the media? But where are the, all about? Where are the media? <laughs> Have you ever heard of a politician making a promise? About his John? status with the foreign press. He's he's gone on this big jaunt to Asia now. Uh, seems to be enjoying rock star status over there. Does he? Does he work the press better than he does in this country? Well, no, the foreign press is, is very, very liberal, almost always has been. And, of course, encouraged by Obama's analysis that everybody in the world hates us, that only certifies their animosity towards the U.S. And, of course, I mean, read some of these foreign newspapers, even the Brits. Uh, it's a very far-left liberal point of view. Ellis? Well, it's also what we call the planet Earth. You know, that's how most people are today. I mean, we're the outliers I I in that equation. Plus, remember that this president follows one whose reaction to most of the world was to thumb his nose at it. And so, sure, people are going to like this guy better. About for a minute, Nancy Pelosi. Uh, some people say that she essentially was doing what the president wanted in the 111th Congress, and her party, her, her membership, took a shellacking because of it. Um, and, and now a lot of people, even in her own party, are urging her to step aside. Plus, you have a little shrine to Nancy Pelosi in our apartment? I'm not a real shrine guy. I mean, listen, Judy is right. It is hugely important, and it's getting, it's getting a lot of coverage. I, I would put my money on her, however, because the electorate here has gotten much closer to Nancy than the one that elected her last time. The caucus is more liberal than before. Some of those blue dogs have been chased away, and I'm, I think she's probably going to win. All right. Did you ever ask yourself the question, what more could I have done to prevent this from happening? Uh, well, we just didn't have any int solid intelligence that gave us a warning on this. I mean, we didn't have any intelligence that said uh, that, uh, you know, get ready, they're going to fly airplanes into New York buildings. The 43rd president there with Matt Lauer of NBC talking about the 9-11 attacks and his new book, Decision Points released earlier this week. You don't think the real Bush came out in, in, in this book in certain ways? Well, I, I guess there's, I got better things to do than study the real Bush. <laughs> it, it came out, honestly, uh, I think it came out as much in these interviews. I mean, thank goodness for the, for the brilliant art of excerpting, right? I mean, someone else can read the book. We can read some of the key paragraphs and, and watch some of these interviews and get kind of a feel and, you know, remember why it is that some of us really liked him and some of us thought he didn't quite measure up. The president uh, was always brutalized every time he misspoke, and then earlier in the week when Sean Hannity flubbed his lines while interviewing the president, we got a good laugh out of that. Take a look. And thank you for joining. Uh, joining. Can we do that again? Yes. <laughs> never thank let, God we're you never let me do it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It would have been uh, underestimated, not misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> this is all included. Yeah. We're adding this. <laughs> Strategy, not strategery. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's probably the only real moment of laughter amidst all the fakery of uh, Oprah and all the forced laughter and Bon Ami, et cetera. That was probably the only real moment. And that's what's likable about the guy. I mean, you disagree with everything. He's a, you know, you still want to have a beer with him. He's, he's, he's good. He was always Those funny. guys, if there's always, a pool spray, all of them go in. All of my guys go in. Okay? That's the new agreement. My second request, friends. When we go in. That was Robert Gibbs in India on Monday, fighting to get his eight pool reporters, as they're known, into the meeting between President Obama and the Indian Prime Minister. Reporters there said Gibbs threatened to pull President Obama out of the meeting if his demands weren't met. Uh, it wasn't a press conference. I mean, does the press secretary have the right to be throwing around Second. the president? Did, did he overstep his bounds? No. Yes. He yes. deserves a free speech medal. Finally, we oh, have here, a press here. secretary uh, who's for action. <laughs> right. These guys spend most of their careers on trying to keep us out of stuff. Yeah, you go, exactly. Gibbs. You go. <laughs> Sarah Palin's Alaska set to premiere this Sunday night on TLC. Take a look at a clip. I think 
fact that my kids will always call Alaska home. I'd rather be out here being free. This is what life is all about. And on a really clear day, you can see Russia from here. Almost. <laughs> she has gotten a lot of heat for that new show. Some lefty groups, Ellis, are pushing Discovery Communications to pull the plug. How about that for freedom of speech? A strategic misstep on the part of the lefty groups you mentioned. Let the woman talk. Believe me, the more she talks, the better off they are.